Hey, Saren, how you doing? Hey, <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you for joining us for this week's Carmen Conversation. Uh, for anybody who's out there who doesn't know, uh, we have this every other week. It's called a Carmen Conversation, and we talk about aspects of the show Voices of Carmen. And Saren was our original Dominic, who plays Carmen's brother and Voices of Carmen. What? what? <laughs> and so, um, Saren, I want you to uh, tell us a little bit about how you came to know Voices of Carmen, be a part of this production, and sort of what your experience was like? Uh, yeah, no. Um, Voices of Carmen, uh, I got introduced through actually one of my friends who's in the show, who you'll meet later. Um, and we were just kind of talking about like music. And um, as Miss CJ said, I'm, I'm really big into like music and rap and poetry. And he was like, yo, there's this director who's really cool. She's working on this project called Voices of Carmen. You should definitely check it out. Um, and I'm really grateful that uh, I was able to, you know, get the part and and really be able to perform with such an amazing cast. Um, yeah, like Voices of Carmen is, is such an amazing production, just um, displaying how to, how to work through issues and how people uh, often take wrong <laughs> approaches and in, 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 um, kind of working with the people that they care most about and, and how they, really just have trouble like expressing themselves and, and how sometimes it's really important to express yourselves in, in your relationships and, and what you like and, and don't like. Awesome, thanks man. I really appreciated you in this role. I felt like you you added a lot of depth um, to it and really understanding. I love the way that you took apart the text. I remember when you were working on this one piece, Soul Divine, and you were uh, sort of working through it. And then you were like, do I even know what I'm saying here? And so you were, <laughs> you went back, unpacked it and got a little deeper down in it. And it really showed when you came into rehearsal the next day, I was like, it was as if you wrote it yourself. So I feel like that was really powerful. And people really commented on what you brought. The character you play is Carmen's brother. Carmen obviously um, is the opera Carmen, or maybe not as obvious as we think. And so Voices of Carmen is uh, an adaptation of the opera set in a high school, it's a musical theater adaptation. And for those who are visual, like me, we're gonna show a quick clip of Voices of Carmen to sort of give you a sense of what we were able to produce last year. All right, all right. So Saren, let's bring out some more folks to join the conversation. I will let you introduce your fellow castmates. Awesome. So we're gonna uh, start introducing the Don Jose's. I wanted to introduce Don Jose number one. You are inspiring, amazing <laughs> Mitchell. <laughs> what up guys? It's great to see you. Don Jose number two. Hello. Eli, the singer. Eli is number three. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm number three. Oh, yeah, number three. <laughs> and our awesome and final Don Jose, we have the amazing friend who invited me out, Terrence Martin. Wow, a round of applause. Right, Lauren, I feel like we need sound effects. Can we do sound effects this time? We're like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, Jared, I think you got some questions and you guys can just start conversating. I'm gonna fly on the wall here. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? What up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> so I definitely wanted to know um, what, from like your perspective, I know we've talked like, you know, offline a couple of times, but just like for the people, uh, how did you hear about Voice of Carmen as well as just like um, how the audition process was like for you guys? Um, yeah. personally, I found out about it. Uh, I was in like, I was in a production with the Gordon Center 
And in the daily call, there was a little um, little snippet that was saying like, hey, Voice to Carmen is looking for young talent. Um, if you're like this age and up, go check it out. And so I tried my luck and I got a call back and that everything went on from there. It was lots of fun. That was, that was really cool. Terrence, how about you? Yeah, um, I came on like the back end of the front end. Um, uh, Voice of the Carmen is one of the uh, many programs by Dance and Be More, which is a company. And I came on the uh, youth council when Miss CJ in the previous year um, was promoting the show. Um, you know, the the original production was last summer, so it wasn't a thing yet, but. She was getting the word out. So I was part of uh, promoting for the show and, um, you know, where a lot of uh, high school aged and a little older people were putting their insights on uh, what, what kids in high school actually go through. Uh, so to make the show more authentic and, you know, honestly, I thought after promoting this show, I was done. Um, wasn't really planning on <laughs> auditioning, but luckily she found me and was like, hey, so you know you can, you know, do it. And it worked out, um, <laughs> it worked out pretty good. Um, but yeah, that was how I heard about it and got involved and ended up auditioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really dope. Yeah, uh, I sometimes uh, like forget, like, you know, that Voice of Carmen being a, such an amazing, like just a like individual program it is. Sometimes I forget that it's a part of the Anti Beamer, which is a larger, amazing program. But yeah, thanks for reminding me. Uh, Mitchell, how about you? Uh, I would be totally honest with you guys. My mom, it was a call. My mom called me. She was like, hey, there's Voices of Carmen. I was like, what is Voices of Carmen? She was like, go find out. And <laughs> after I followed my mother's instructions and went to find out uh, the audition, was really, really fun. I got to meet Miss CJ. I immediately fell in love with Miss CJ because of her personality, her work ethic. I immediately fell in love. And then I got a call back. And when I got a call back, I was actually surprised that I got a call back. I was like, wow, really? Me, a call back? So I got the call back and the rest was history after that. I stuck with the process until the end. I want to jump in here because one of my favorite things is to tell people sort of after you've done the show, some of the things that were going on in my head when I met you at the audition. And so, um, so Mitch, I, to me, the way you talked about theater and art, it was, you were young, but it was, you were already so passionate about it. I was like, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> Like you were talking like you're giving a hundred and ten percent and you just love this so much and tell me about this time you were doing the show and you like got a hammy but you kept going. <laughs> that was the most painful thing. <laughs> so um, so I definitely felt like, wow, talk about work ethic. That was definitely something that shone through in your audition process. And I remember, Eli, your audition um, came to Murbo and you were sitting in the back and um, you were like filling out your little paperwork. I know you were very professional. You were like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> when we got to the dance thing, Eli was like, ah, ooh, ah. and I was like, oh, come on, come on. I was <laughs> <laughs> Eli has moves and you had a great, amazing voice. I mean, so pure and so clean. But honestly, I was so impressed with your, the diversity of your skill set. You were a singer, you were a dancer. Like there was nothing that you weren't approaching with confidence. Um, and so that's both volumes. And now Terrence, I've known Terrence since Terrence was like, like below the screen. This is how high he was. <laughs> so, Young Terrence, the dog. Part of the uh, Carmen Youth Council, and we did some workshop stuff. So then the auditions were going on. I didn't see Terrence. I was like, oh, okay, you know, maybe he's going to come. We have five auditions in five different locations uh, west, north, south, east. And then I was like, oh, um, okay, we have at the fourth audition and I have not seen Terrence. <laughs> I'm like, what? So I went up to Terrence. Uh, I remember at UMBC, I was like, yeah, what you doing? 
<laughs> Why are you not showing up? And he was like, oh, you know, I wanted to give other people a chance. I was like, oh, you that generous? <laughs> <laughs> so, I was like, gee, other people in camp, I mean, that's cool and all, but this isn't like the lunch table. Go get your job. And so he's like, okay. So then he came to the last audition. Terrence came in. He was originally cast as Escamillo. So after the callback, if you remember, I had you singing, you know, it's our hero, come below. And because Terrence is hilarious, he's very funny. And I knew that about him. I was like, oh, yeah. and this is gonna be great. But then what happened was we were doing the cast album, and I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna shut up. But we were doing the cast album, <laughs> and Terrence was singing Escamillo, sounded great. Sing, it's the Toreador from Carmen. He's doing a thing. But then after the full recording, he's packing up. And I'm like, oh, that was great. That was great. And as he's leaving, he's packing his bag and he's like, and he's singing really like R&B and so forth. And I was like, oh, that's, that's funny. That's real funny. <laughs> and so he left and I just kept, I said, don't forget that. I just told him, don't forget that. So he left and I started playing around with what if uh, we switched up Toreador and that the ensemble sings it like a George Bizet opera, but then Escamillo himself comes out and he's just like the r &B king <laughs> with the swing doing his thing. And actually that's how the idea came about was you packing up your bag, just kind of humming it in more of an r &B groove. And then later, lo and behold, we wind up recasting you and changing you to be Don Jose Four because I really needed a strong um, performer and you had a lot of experience to actually play that role so so grateful to have you step up into that role and have all three of you as Don Jose's with us for our debut performance thank you very much all right so Aaron hopped off I'm gonna go to our next question which is um when you think about week one um sort of what was your first impression um, and my hope is that this also helps people who are maybe coming into Voices of Carmen. We have a lot of new cast members, 30 or 40 people coming in this year about what they can expect. They start Monday, week one of Camp Carmen. So what would you say, okay, to expect or that you realize or notice from week one of Camp Carmen? Yeah, I, um, definitely, uh, week, uh, what's up? <laughs> week one, uh, definitely, um, it stood out to me. I was a little nervous because, um, the first week after auditions, I've been singing, but I've kind of taken a break from, uh, acting. Um, so to see so many people, uh, individually there for their thing was special and for us all to do workshops and community things uh talking rather than just you know typical auditions let's see what you can do um rather it was more of an energy of a let's see where we could fit what you can do um if that makes sense so week one was really cool in that way it was less about um the product which the product became amazing um uh, the final but more about getting to know the people part of the product and teaching us um it was like we were getting paid uh for job training um you know we were learning just as much as we um had to do um in my opinion i learned more than i had to do um but uh yeah and that week one it was really special because it set the tone and also um yeah that was kind of my uh so look out for that i guess for the next carmen cast um it won't be like a typical experience for auditioning uh whether it's a previous show it's nothing to be scared of it's more of a uh you know let's figure this out together type of uh environment but yeah cool thanks for that eli were you gonna say something uh yeah I remember I was very excited because in the callbacks, like this was BSA. Okay, I don't go to an art school, 
Well, when I went to BSA and I learned that there were kids from an art school going, I was like, okay, okay, this is much more stiff of a competition than I remember. And then I remember seeing all, like, I don't remember her name, but there was this one girl who could sing opera like nobody's business. And I was like, I, I was impressed. And I, I knew that this was going to be a well done show. And I was very excited for that. And everyone seemed to know what they were doing. Everyone seemed familiar with Carmen. And so I just started, I started, like, I only knew the Torador song in Habanera. And so to like, to be put with these like really professional looking guys, it was a little intimidating, but like once I got my footing, it was a lot of fun. And the, like the cast was like really nice. I thought the chemistry was really great. So it ended up being okay. But like the first week, it, it seemed like a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I, um, I really appreciated and noticed Eli is I'm a pretty outgoing person, but I have some introvert tendencies where I, it's a lot of people, right? Um, we have 54 people in that room. And, you know, we would divide up and music musicians would go upstairs and actors would go here, people would go on the stage. But, you know, we sort of acknowledged that a uh, seven, eight hour day with 54 people, it's gonna be a long, it's gonna be a long week. And so uh, we said, you know, if you need to have some alone time, you know, pick your little place. And I remember I would come by and Eli, you had a little spot that was, you're like, I'm good. I'm right here. And you would read your little book. And it was super, I was like, it was like a little man cave. <laughs> you used to just hang out in the little hallway. Um, yep. I love that. And that everybody gave each other room to be together or take a break. Um, and that just felt like, normal like nobody was like oh you need to come hang and like we just said everybody is different we're gonna we're gonna connect in different ways which actually brings me to my next question uh, which is uh we're gonna show some a little behind the scenes so every morning we used to do this um sort of uh get to the what other ways did you connect and who did you meet during this whole process of doing Voices of Carmen. Can you talk about that? Um, yeah. yeah, I remember, um, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. You got it, bro. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I remember in the mornings we'd walk around like in a circle, like a track, uh, and I met, no, nah, go ahead, go ahead, Terrence. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I um yeah I think uh these two guys are probably um well three guys I knew Sarah uh before um but uh Mitch and Eli uh as we crafted together stuff as Don Jose's um it, it was a bond that built from that but uh uh each uh, morning as Eli referenced uh each morning we had a little community building where we just talked about, it didn't just have to be about the show, just something, whether it was relationships and stuff like that. Um, and it broke barriers down between, um, there's no individual that stands out from the cast as much because I felt the whole cast uh, walls were, barriers were broken um, in the sense of, you know, we got to a point by a couple weeks in, um, you know, Voices of Carmen or just theater wasn't what we talked about. Uh, we got to talk about just life. Um, and, you know, and it was genuine friendships beyond that. I think the little things, uh, creating something and having our times away, uh, like the CJ reference about, um, you know, getting our space alone. Um, uh, as time passed, you know, inviting one or two castmates with you in your uh, time and really, uh, growing in that uh, building and uh, having conversations. That didn't just have to do with the passion that brought us together, but just as people. But um, yeah. So for me, what it was like connecting with other company members, because I'm a people person and I, I just love people. Like even even this whole, I'm gonna just go take off talking for a minute, even this quarantine is really getting me because I love people and I love being around people. 
So um, connecting with other company members, we had our exercise in the morning and that, like Taryn said, it really broke down uh, the barriers. Um, because I'm not going to lie, when I walked in for week one, I was I was a bit nervous. 54 people. I don't know any of them. You know, it was a new thing for me. But after the community exercises and just just as as a theater, as a theater ensemble, you you always form a bond with your ensemble. Um, good, bad or indifferent. You always form a bond with your ensemble. So that icebreaker for me kind of just. In, in in terms set it off for me because I talk to everybody now like it's a it was a new thing for me it broke me out of my shell and now I'm a lot more comfortable than I was when I actually walked in so yeah <laughs> yeah no I definitely agree with like all of what you guys said um I know even for me like those icebreakers are like really important in just um like kind of expediting that process of getting to know people. Um, I think sometimes like, like I haven't been in a, in, I hadn't been in a play for a while when I started, um, which gave me like a lot of insecurities, but like everyone, those icebreakers, like allow me to connect with people, allow me to kind of get out of myself a lot more and be like, okay, like they're just people, despite them being absurdly, amazingly talented, like they're just people, like it's cool. Um, and it really gave me a chance to like, you know, like get to know like individuals. I know that you guys are um, kind of played the same person. What was it kind of like playing um, Don Jose in the ways that you did and, and sharing that role? How about Mitchell? Cause we haven't heard you start yet. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this one off. So for me playing Don Jose, my personally, in my opinion, my Don Jose was all about facial expressions. He had to show he didn't want Carmen, uh, regardless of how much she danced around him. So she had to, he had to show that he didn't want her. So my, so me sharing it with the other guys, my Don Jose personally with was all about facial expressions and body language and really capturing the 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 essence, if you will, of my Don Jose. Uh, through my body and my facial expression. So that's what it was like uh, for me. Eli, how about you? I know that your um, Don Jose kind of took like a different approach to things. How was that? Yeah, uh, I had to be a little more in my feelings, I guess, because like I had this little solo uh, where Don Jose is, um, writes a letter to Carmen from his jail cell. And he's like, I still got feelings for you. And I had to be a little more sad. It sort of brought the show like to like, a turning point. Cause at this, like up until then we thought that he wasn't interested, but then we realized that he is. Um, and so I had to really like punch the point across. Cause I think that was in the, towards the end of the first act. Yeah. I think. So it was, it was a lot of pressure to like, get that done. Um, but once, once you've nailed like the feelings, that's uh, like, that's the key to that part of the role. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You definitely hit those notes. Terrence, how about you? Yeah, um, it was really fun to share this role with these guys, especially as we were plotting uh, everything together um, to have their different perspectives on the character, um, but no wrong perspective, because um, we took it as each of us perceived was really cool. Uh, was really cool. And especially for me, um, you know, as a person, it even helped me grow in terms of looking to understand as opposed to just judge. Um, you know, DJ kind of, uh, I've done some fun characters before, but uh, none that's pulled the actions DJ has uh, ultimately done. So, um, you know, basically uh, going to understand uh <laughs> why he does what he does, you know? Um, less of a, you know, cause for me, it's easy for someone if they did what DJ's done, nah, I would be like, well, you did what you did. It's no rationalizing this. It's no understanding this, it's right and wrong. But um, going beyond that to be able to betray uh, DJ was more understanding, okay, this man's hurting and getting to the bottom of where that came from was, really cool so it, it helped me um not only in the show with uh acting it out 
but just as a person in general seeking to understand uh beyond just the action of a of a person and we kind of hit that in one of our workshops uh, the restorative response where we talked about uh conflict resolution and talking it out so it was really cool um uh sharing this with these guys and kind of um having to be kind of therapeutic <laughs> yeah um, to play. um just in not being judgmental <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah, you guys all individually did awesome and definitely together, I think, killed the role of Don Jose. Um, I was just wondering, cause I don't particularly know a lot of this and I think it'd be helpful for the people watching. Like, I know that you guys worked on like the monologue and, and, and things like that by yourself. Like, how was that working together on those pieces? Uh, I rem if I remember, it was, if I remember we all wrote like our own little monologue and then we sent them like into one little one phone and we started reading and like taking what we liked from each monologue until we had like this Frankenstein's monster of a monologue <laughs> for, uh, for Don Jose number four to read. Uh, so it was, it was really chill and it got us to like think about more into like what Carmen means to Don Jose throughout like the play. And uh, that, that's how we got it done. It was it was a lot of work. Yeah, yeah definitely. What, do you think? what um honestly, what Eli said um for my piece of writing the monologue, I was like Eli. I had to get in my feelings to write it <laughs> and to truly understand, you know, how to capture my Don Jose and my monologue. And once we once we had all the pieces and we put them together and we workshopped it, we see what we were going to keep and what we weren't going to keep like Eli said, a, a monster of a monologue that that was uh, that was wonderful. So, yeah, that's what it was for me. Just kind of writing it from my Don Jose's uh, perspective and how he saw it. Yeah, dope. Terrence. Yeah, they uh, pretty much hit it. Um, I think uh, it, it worked out funny though, because uh, the portions of the monologue was the order of the Don Jose's that wrote it. Um, and it ended up, you know, it got more and more intense. And I felt that that reflected uh, what each of our <laughs> Don Jose's played as it got a little darker and darker as it went on. Yeah. So uh, I guess funny is not the word for it, but uh, a cool coincidence. Um, but yeah, that was really cool to put that together uh, with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds like it was a lot of fun. But speaking of Carmen, uh, I wanted to know how working with a Carmen, like kind of having that partner in a character and individually having a partner each character, um, how that was. Um, so like, how was it working with the Carmens? Yeah, so for my working with my Carmen was absolutely wonderful. Uh, I loved I loved every minute of it, to be totally honest. Um, it was a very now because I'm going to start about the I'm going to talk about the dance for a minute. Um, the tango dance that we did, my tango dance was um, I had never done tango before. I had never, ever done that before. I had never done it. So to learn it and to really experience that was amazing like i was i was in awe just learning that and really seeing i was like wow like i was amazed so yeah yeah no it must have been really dope working with a, a dancer too for that in in we shang yeah <laughs> I know um, Mitch, not uh, not Mitchell, Eli. I know you also worked with a dancer. How was that? And you danced too, classic. Uh, yeah, I danced outside, but I'd never done tango, so that was a little bit of a that was a bit of a change. So I had to like, react to that. Uh, I was it was a lot of fun. They really broke it down. Um, the choreography, like they taught us, like the basic moves that were gonna be in the dance. Um, and they really made it easy to digest, easy to take in, on uh, to execute. And they were really kind about it. You know, it felt I felt comfortable to try out, uh, try it out, like without being judged. You know, so 
it was a lot of fun. It was really relaxed. Um, and we, I think in the end, uh, we made a good uh, product. Yeah, no, it definitely looked really cool when you guys performed it. So I, you must have worked hard then because it sounds like you guys are struggling, but it didn't look like it. <laughs> Terrence, how about you? Um, yeah, I, uh, Mitch and Eli definitely picked it up a lot faster <laughs> um, than uh, me, uh, not going to lie. Um, my Carmen picked it up a lot faster. Grateful for her. Uh, she was an amazing talent, but she was also very patient when it came to dancing. Um, I, I am not a dancer, um, especially for tango. So um, that was probably, uh, ironically, that was the most fun part. Um, <laughs> True. You know, learning that I, I was probably the slowest to pick that up. It was a uh, <laughs> Part of me was like, I don't think someone got to talk to me, CJ. I don't know how to pick this up by, by uh, you know, showtime. But uh, you know what? It, it, it ended up good. And, um, you know, working with my Carmen was fun in general with the uh, with acting, too. Because, um, you know, singing is my my uh, the main thing I came on the show to do. So even stretching with the acting, it was like, OK um something else to be patient with me with but um but the the tango probably i think it was the tango right guys yeah um yeah i forget what the dance was. Yeah, yeah yeah um tango was definitely probably the highlight in the <laughs> the carmen don jose experience so much pride was in my eyes when i finally you know I don't want to say mastered. That's a strong word, but I got it. <laughs> I got it somewhat. <laughs> word. <laughs> yeah, um, that's really dope. I mean, I, I think that in general, you guys did a really awesome job with that. Just like working with your comments, you guys seem to mesh relatively well with all of your comments, like acting wise and and even singing wise. I know Terrence, you're partnered with a, a really talented singer um, in your Carmen. Um, and you guys ended up, and I know as a group, just not with your Carmen's, we did a lot of like group work and, and workshops, definitely like um, learning and developing ourselves as actors, as singers, as dancers, um, and as people, most importantly, uh, which is something Miss CJ definitely stressed us doing, like working as people, like getting better at people. Um, just out of curiosity, like what were some of your favorite workshops that we went through? Um, like, I know we had like the financial one, uh, we had a guest and, and Mr. Andre come and talk to us about what it's like creating. Uh, from the creator's perspective, uh, we had, you know, Restorative Response Baltimore come through and, and tell us about how to, to do effective statements. And, and we had kind of like a photography demonstration and kind of a lesson on that. What were some of you guys' favorites from those? Um, I really liked the uh, financial discussion. It was a little, um, little low key. You know, yeah. well, but it it got a lot of uh, important information. It, it threw a lot of important information for us to know as like uh, young adults. Like we're gonna need to know how to like set up an account, um, how to uh, I don't know how to get like how to actually get money. You know, <laughs> Where? Uh, get, um, uh, cash checks. Like it was a lot of important information, and I think it was Mitchell who said this earlier. Uh, we had to learn a lot. We learned a lot. We learned a l just as much as we did. And that was one of the most important uh, seminars for me. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it was really cool having CJ, like, you know, who's kind of been there, done that, kind of being like, all right, guys, like, this is really what you need to know. Like, financial literacy is important, guys. Um, what about you, Mitchell? What, is, what was one of your favorites? Oh, I'm stuck between the financial and Andre, but I think I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and say Andre, because that was that really helped me to learn not only as an artist, but just to learn um, excellence as a person. Simply, that's that's what it is. So just listening to Andre and hearing his creative process, uh, a lot of what his creative process was, was a little uh, similar to mine. So um, when I. Um, do plays or when I write or whatever it is, 
it, it was similar. So just hearing, just just hearing that, I always say it. He, he it's like he reignited my fire almost. So just sitting in that workshop and really taking it all in was was great. But that financial one, I think that financial one was pretty good too. But I think I'm gonna have to put Andre first place. Can't get mad at that. <laughs> Definitely was a is a generational talent. Terrence, how about you? Yeah, I think um, all the workshops were great. Probably my favorite was restorative uh, response, was it called? Um, yeah. We talked about conflict resolution and all sat down. Um, it was one of the first like aha moments of uh, when I got a picture of uh, what Voices of Carmen, uh, you know, I mean, we knew what it was about going in, uh, but it, it hit me about, you know, the conversation we had with each other talking about conflict resolution um to be able to be in a platform to open up those conversations uh in baltimore to other people our age uh where where um not just our age just domestic disputes in in the city um uh so it was really cool to go through that that experience and also uh let it hit that we were gonna open up uh hopefully open up uh, that, you know, open space for people to talk uh, through voices of Carmen. So that was probably my favorite. Yeah, no, I think that was that was something that was really dope too. I think like, it was really interesting. Like now I'm, I'm coming kind of closer to like adulthood as I'm 19 now and uh, was about 19, 18 around the time when we were doing it. Um, and kind of like hearing the things they were talking about and being like, wow, I do not speak that way. I can see why we had issues with a couple of people now. Like I can see why my parents might've been upset or why some of my friends <laughs> might've been upset with um, with like what we, you know, we were talking about. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely an awesome workshop. And we got Miss CJ back, awesome. So I wanted to go backstage. I have so enjoyed just listening to y'all have this conversation and, uh, you know, having some memories about uh, what we were able to do during our summer. Um, and definitely like all the workshops, I'm with all of you. I'm like, was Andre my favorite? Like everyone had a different sort of part, you know, that it contributed. And so I'm so excited that this year, all of our young people are going to get the HR and financial literacy. They're going to get um, Andre's coming back <laughs> to do uh, some more artistic excellence and share some of uh, music from his show. So we're excited about that. We also have Restorative Response Baltimore, who's become like a really uh, foundational partner for us because they help us in crafting the questions that become the audience participation questions around conflict and how conflict show up in our own lives and what tools we can use to actually, you know, not have things go sideways. Yeah, um, definitely. And then, um, but this year I'm actually super excited and we have a special guest with us backstage who's going to come out. We're going to have a new workshop this year from the House of Ruth. And so I want to invite Stephanie to come out. You guys can hang out backstage uh, to share a little bit more about the uh, tea workshop that she's going to do with Voices of Carmen this year. Hello, Stephanie. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So can you tell us a little bit more about what is the House of Ruth and um, what workshop you'll be leading? Sure. So um, House of Ruth, Maryland is the domestic violence center for Baltimore City. Um, each county in Maryland kind of has their own domestic violence center. Um, and we work within Baltimore City, but we also have locations kind of throughout Maryland um, in Montgomery County, PG County. Um, we have a hotline for victims and survivors to call and get connected with resources. We have an emergency shelter. Um, we provide counseling for folks. Um, legal assistance. We even have an abuse intervention program where we work with um, folks who are unhealthy in their relationships and how they can kind of work on that. Um, and I work in our training institute and we go out into the community and kind of talk about the issue. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I, I remember um, the first time I was really getting a sense of this abuse intervention aspect that the House of Ruth does, I was in my car listening to NPR and um, someone was being interviewed and talking about um, this idea of how many, how much 
uh, intervention there is for people who are victims of abuse. Um, and I always was curious, what if you are a person who um, has a tendency towards abuse? You know, what if that was something in your history? What if you don't have the tools to manage your own emotions or haven't seen examples of that? What do you do? Where is that help? Um, and sort of where is the help for the Don Jose, who really, when you look at the front of Voices of Carmen, we couldn't imagine that he would be the guy at the end who kills his girlfriend, right? And so how did he get there? What were the escalating conflicts? And at what point in that journey could we, could there have been an intervention that helped him to go in a different way? And Sarah, your rap is all about crossroads. You know, don't let the road that you choose take you out like a fool is the lyric that you're at this point in your life where you go this way or this way. And so that's sort of part of what we're trying to do with this piece. Um, any thoughts about that, Stephanie? Yeah, I absolutely love that. Um, I'm not super familiar with the play. I tried to read up on it a little bit, but from what I was reading, um, how you guys are looking to kind of tackle that and then bring in this issue so that you can learn. I've loved hearing you guys talk about what you're learning outside of the play and how it relates to the play. Um, I think that that's, that's amazing. It, it's, it's really interesting because, you know, at the end of the day, um, we believe that uh, unhealthy behaviors. We all use unhealthy behaviors in our relationships, right? I would be lying if I said I've never called my partner a name before or blamed him for something. Um, so we can all improve and kind of that introspection and and using something that you're doing with each other um, as a way to kind of reflect back um, on your experiences and the experiences of folks your age, I think is, is really great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for Stephanie or Stephanie, do you have any questions for any, any of our uh, Don Jose's? I would love to know kind of what um, the relationships that you guys are seeing. I know there's three different Don Jose's, so there's kind of different situations, but what is the relationships that you guys are seeing? Are they good? Are they bad? Are they somewhere in between? What's the, the relationship aspect in the, uh, the play? So Mitchell starts out as our Don Jose number one. And our, our Don Jose number two isn't here today, uh, but maybe Mitch, you can sort of follow through. And then Don Jose number three is Eli, and then Terrence rounds it out. So it's sort of a journey that they take. So Mitch, if you want to start us off. Of course. So my Carmen, at first, Don Jose kind of plays her off. Um, he's like, nah, I don't want no parts of this. So because he says, no, not really, and all of a sudden, Carmen, it, it gets reckless and Carmen winds up about to get arrested. And so now I'm speaking uh, on behalf of Don Jose number two. Don Jose didn't want the situation to happen. He didn't want to get to that point. Um, but because his captain kind of made him kind of made him uh, get to that point, he's like, OK, well, I'm here. So because I'm here, you know, and it just kind of it just kind of goes downhill from there, basically. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah. At first he plays her off and this is this is a very, very plot twist here, but he ends up killing her. And that's the really sad part about it. So yeah. So Miss, you just took like everybody's trajectory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. But, um, Eli or Terrence, you wanna add any little nuances of your journey in the relationship with Carmen? Um yeah, uh, Mitchell pretty much covered it, but at the beginning, it's like really chill. He doesn't really want to be involved with this relationship. And then where it falls into my lap, like my part, I'm sort of, he sort of throws a Hail Mary, you know, like it isn't, he's really putting himself out there. And that's where things get a little risky, right? Because he, Carmen sort of does, she starts to push him off a little bit and uh, he it, it, it's like a crossroads and he has to like choose how he's going to handle that rejection. And um, that's where like, that's where the bad part starts, you know? So what's it like kind of playing a character? This might go towards kind of the, the later Don Jose is playing a character that you may not necessarily agree with what he's doing or how he's treating folks. He ends up killing Carmen in the end. And I, I assume uh, that that's not something that you guys would do in that situation. But so how do you how do you play that, you know, where you have empathy for the character, but you also wouldn't do what he's doing? T 
Terrence. <laughs> I can't uh, hear you too. Was that directed to me just now? Yes. Um, Sarah, uh, can you hear me now, Terrence? Hey, Saren, why don't you share? Because sometimes if the Wi-Fi is not tight, you can only hear a couple people. Why don't you yeah. share? This is a great question. Terrence, can you hear me? So for us, I can hear you. Um, uh, so go ahead, I can repeat it, yeah. yeah. So yeah, basically what she's that. asking is like, um, like how, how did you approach a character um, like Don Jose, um, who you <laughs> hopefully don't agree with his methods um, in how he handles the situation. But you know, you kind of feel for it because in a, in a way it's like he's trying to deal with his emotions and, and doesn't know how. How did you kind of um, work through that character and, and think about how they think? Gotcha. Um, I, uh, and I kind of touched on this earlier. Um, I was uh, in processing this character um, I had to hit a point um, in understanding, um, not agreeing, but I couldn't, uh, you know, play DJ without at least having some understanding of why he was feeling what he felt. Um, and as I thought about it more um, and put my, uh, you know, uh, what may be called valid judgments uh, aside in terms of, uh, putting your hands on on a on a girl and uh choking her out just looking at the action you know just well no there's no validation no i don't want to understand but actually getting to the bottom of why he feels um you just see him um or i just view him as a young man who's hurting uh more and more and hasn't been able to um and i'm very reserved when i'm mad in my life but the few times I've slipped was when I haven't thought through or processed why I'm hurt. And this is just a man who's, um, I view as someone who's never really had that opportunity to vent, to, uh, to sift through those emotions in a healthy way. Um, and so, yeah, for me and taking the character that I don't agree with at all, even though, you know, Carmen's not 100% innocent, but that's another story. Um, I think, you know, for me, it's just, all right, let me understand your hurt rather than, um, try to agree. And that's a tricky, uh, thing to play with, but yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't hear, uh, Ms. CJ and Ms. Stephanie. Oh, I'm that's okay. Right that. Thank you for having me last <laughs> week. Um, so check this out. Uh, I'm going to throw this out there just because I remember that moment where we sat down as Carmen and Don Jose's and talked about our relationship. Right. And, you know, who are we? Where did we meet? You know, what is it that attracts us to this other person? Why does Carmen want him so much when really she seems to want no one? Um, and what is it, about, is it about him sort of ignoring her that? feels like, oh, well, I, I want to I wanna capture his attention. And then what is it that Don Jose gives up for Carmen, right? So his initial thing was that he was going away having a great weekend with his sweetheart girlfriend from hometown. And then because of his sort of duty as a soldier, it gets told, voluntold to take Carmen to jail. So now he's missing his weekend. And then in the midst of um, some unexpected chemistry, he now is sort of in in feelings for Carmen and now he's missing this other relationship that he has and then he loses her as a prisoner so now he gets put in jail now he's missing his freedom so there's all of these sort of withdrawals <laughs> and as opposed to deposits in this relationship that are, that is taking from him in different ways and to where he's you know depleted and sort of on empty and it was really interesting for me to listen to y'all really talk about um, what that feels like as a man um, to be in relationship and feel like you've lost your job security, you've lost you know, uh, relationships, you've lost your own sort of status and self-respect and, and now this person is rejecting you on top of that and where um, that can lead and where that can go. Um, so that, that was, I felt very privileged to for y'all to allow me to sit in on that conversation as you unpack that 
as men. And then, Sharon, I just want to throw this to you real quick before we open up for some questions from our audience. You as Carmen's brother telling this story and then us coming to realization that you are in this space of grieving your sister and wanting to stuff those feelings until your classmates open up a pathway and a, and a, and a mechanism for, to hold space for your grief. Um, can you talk a little bit about that process? Um, because I think there are some parallels to Don Jose who never got to grieve all of his losses. And then this new space that we put Dominic in as Carmen's brother to grieve his losses. Yeah, um, I think that it was it was a really interesting you know place like um, as an individual and like uh, during the performance, um, you know, uh, just like a lot of like research on on how to draw out emotions and and honestly just dealing with some emotions myself. Um, and I'm, I have two older sisters kind of pulling from a place like, yo, how would I feel if this had happened to one of my sisters? Um, like, just try to figure that out and, and even kind of diving deeper into my character and like, yo, if my class like kind of rallied around me the way they did, like how would that help me accept emotions? How would that help me, you know, find closure? Um, and I think it kind of just showed the importance of, of community just in dealing with um, emotions and even relationships just in general. Like I think that, you know, you don't specifically see any um, immediate friends of, of Don Jose or DJ that kind of impact him positively that um, personally I think would have been um, like helpful in a lot of ways, you know, just, just in helping him like deal with emotions and like work through things. And I think even as a character you know, my character just like kind of as my Dominic, which is my character, uh, her brother, just kind of like having friends in a community to kind of rally around me to to kind of like, you know, push me in the right direction um, and, and dealing with my emotions in, in, in a positive way that uh, I think a lot of people don't get if they don't have that community that I just was privileged as a character to have. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Stephanie, I want to thank you for uh, coming and letting us know what we can look forward to for Voices of Carmen 2020. Um, and I also just want to um, let you know, we actually have a few people from Voices of Carmen 2020. So Stephanie, you and I are going to go backstage and we're going to bring out two gentlemen. And Saren, it's up to you to keep the conversation going and introduce uh, a couple of our Don Jose's for 2020. Um, and then our audience, if you have any questions for us, um, this is your time to turn those in so that you can ask these gentlemen some questions as we begin to wrap up. And thanks again uh, as we meet our Don Jose's 2020. Yeah, no, uh, we are going to have, like she said, the 2020 Don Jose's. Uh, we have the awesome Tyrone. Um, and we also have another awesome person, Nisha, um, who Tyrone is Don Jose one and two. Um, and Nisha plays DJ, um, kind of the last Don Jose. Um, what's up, guys? What's going on? How y'all feeling? How are you living? Ooh. Trying to get this convo going, talk about what's going on. Um, I did want to ask you guys some questions, though, that I think would be really cool if the audience heard. Um, cool, guys. Um, I just, I just wanted to know, um, like, what you guys, you know, were thinking uh, when you guys first saw the role of the convo. Um, honestly, I was, I was kind of like shot and surprised at the same time. Like I didn't know which, which direction I had to go with Don Jose. Um, cause he was listening, listening to like the music and everything like that. And when I actually read like the script into who Don Jose actually was, I was like, okay, okay. It's, it's starting to come together a little bit. And then like, when it was like, yeah. Like, I'm, I need, need you to understudy him. I was like, okay, that's no problem. 
Oh, but, then she, but then when she said it was like five other ones, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, golly. And then the, the thing that got me was when she was talking about like a whole singer ass. I'm not a singer. So I'm like, oh, no, you're trying to set me up. You're trying to set me up. I'm take this L. I'm going to take this big L. So but it, um, actually when I actually got like put yeah. both feet in it. It wasn't as bad as I thought. So I'm really looking forward to exploring Don Jose and coming out like with my own version of him because I find it unique that each and every one of y'all had y'all different approach to the character. And it made him like they're all components of who he is. Because that's that's just like a real person, you know, it's not just one attribute that makes up a person. You got multiple things that make a person yeah. into who they are. So I, I think it's interesting that it's like five levels or now like six. <laughs> That's always dope. Yeah, yeah Don, I, I think that, you know, Don Jose, is, especially this way, is, is a really just a creative approach to having a character in general and, and especially like um, a character as intricate as Don Jose, like playing with different people is definitely something new and I think really, really creative. Um, Tyrone, I know that you uh, right now are playing two of the Don Jose's, um, and uh, we have some of the previous Don Jose's. I wanted to ask kind of um, the other Don Jose's, the 19 Don Jose's, um, what kind of their approach was to filling kind of this role, um, kind of spinning game, getting a bit of advice to these 20 Don Jose's. What were some of you guys' approaches to finding out how to portray this character? Kind of like creative inspiration. Parents, how about you? Where did you kind of find some of your creative inspiration? Creative inspiration. Um, okay. I, you can't hear me? You're good. You're good. Oh, got okay. you. Got you. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I think um, and Ms. CJ, the director, uh, did a great job in letting uh, the actor's strengths uh, show uh, in how they uh, portray Don Jose. Um, uh, I got to sing and reflect uh, Don Jose's pain um, in the final number. Uh, whatever it was, but a lot of what we were talking about before an approach to him um, would just have a very open mind uh, right before you uh, get into it. Because um, if you look at the cat and uh, this way he does, it's like, Yo, why am I playing this? Um, but it's like, um, so I, I think have a very open mind um, and a, a, allow a uh, allow it to be a self-reflection for you as well. Um, you know, because, you know, I got to look at myself and it's like, oh, okay, how can I grow? And where are the connections? There are always uh, connections we can make to anyone who's hurting. Um, not the same way, and not in the, I'm a strangle her type of way, but in a, you know, <laughs> I'm struggling right now. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hurting, so I think, uh, my approach would be um, would be uh, have a very very open mind, and uh, you know I, I love how Nisha brought up you know each of us brought uh, different um, components to the person. You know, you just being who you are um, is exactly uh, what what uh, your version of Don Jose needs because it's your version. So. Um, Definitely, I encourage you with that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's super dope. Did uh, any of you have questions, Tyrone or Nisha? Yeah, I was actually curious. Um, what are some tools that uh, you guys gained from Carmen that you think will help future production? Um. Personally, uh, I learned uh, in like in the uh, workshops, like I learned how to like not went like apologize without putting blame elsewhere. You know, like I'm sorry that you feel that way. Like I'm sorry that uh, I'm sorry about what I did. You know, not about like disconnecting the you from what I did. 
Um, I learned, like I said, finances. I learned about that. Um, and I actually think I got better at like interacting with other people because like spending quite a bit of time and walking around that track a few times with uh, new people helped me like learn uh, different ways to like connect on uh, to start conversations and to continue them and to have those conversations turn into friendships, you know? So I learned a whole slew of skills. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, Mitchell, how about you? So one of the things I learned that would help me for future productions is, I share one memory, I was in a workshop with uh, with Andre, and this is one of the things that um, I may not, I'm paraphrasing it because I don't remember the full saying, but one of the phrases he said, art is pain, art brings excellence. So one thing I hope me that learn from my future, uh, art brings excellence, uh, not perfection. So that phrase really helped me because I, I am, when it comes to theater, I am like, I'm like a control freak. I'm like, it's like OCD only theater version, you know? So I have to remember that I can't sometimes the role that I'm playing, or even just me, it won't allow me to have perfection. But if I can show excellence in what I'm playing, or the role that I'm playing, then that's good, and that's you know that's what's needed in theater. Another thing I learned was just simply job readiness. Uh, we had a lot of job readiness, uh, workshop training, so and that really helped me for not only future production but just life, like honestly. So, yeah. Yeah, no, like, um, I, I, that was really awesome advice, guys. Thank you for that. I really hope that helps with Don Jose's. Um, we're just going to talk with the 2020 Don Jose's real quick. So thank you, guys, uh, for just giving advice and having this morning to take them. You got bam. There it is. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, man. Hey, I'm so glad y'all can join us so real quick. Um, I have questions this is your time to jump in, but I just want to introduce you a little more thoroughly to each two gentlemen. So, last year we have four Don Jose's and four Carmen. This year we have three Don Jose's and three Carmen. I love to put it up and find different things. And the way that we cast this is really whatever talent you bring is how and what you're going to use to portray your Don Jose or your Carmen. So last year, our first Carmen was a dancer actress, and that's how she portrayed that role. This year, our first Carmen is an actress singer. And so she'll be singing the habanera and dancing. And so, uh, but she's also such a strong actress. She can cover the second uh, Carmen. And so we decided to do the same thing with our first Don Jose. I really enjoyed um, auditioning Tyrone. Initially, Tyrone was coming in as an ensemble member and a trumpet player. Um, he uh, is a musician. And um, and then something wasn't work, quite working out. And I was like, uh, let me see if I can have you understudy this. And then next thing you know, we're like, how about we see if we have you play this role? <laughs> and Tyrone was like, I'm down. And I think what's really cool about it is I'm excited to actually have um, our first Don Jose be that guy in the military who plays the trumpet. And that there is some chemistry between him and Carmen just musically in the way that he plays and the way that she sings. Um, that is really undeniable. And I think that's going to be a very interesting way to play that out, uh, to utilize your musicianship as well as your acting. Um, and so we also have our third uh, Don Jose, who is a singer, as Eli was. And then we have uh, Nice and Play DJ for short, who we also know as Don Julio. <laughs> We just decided that it was Don Jose and accidentally called him Don Julio. So we literally decided that that's that's your Don, that's your DJ. <laughs> <laughs> but I've known Nisha since like back in center stage days 
Nisha would go to the after school program, acting. He's danced with and performed with uh, Dance and Be More um, as an artist in our Elder Arts uh, concert we did at the Motor House. Um, Nisha's actually our oldest cast member um, and also came on no, mainly as an understudy, but with everything going on with sort of the delays and challenges of the pandemic, um, we were right in the middle of finishing up our audition process. So I like to have a lot of understudies on hand. And this year, two of our understudies have actually stepped into the role, and that's both Tyrone and Nisha. And what's interesting, um, I, I did a show on Broadway for years called Hairspray. And um, some of the folks that people see now as like huge and famous were the understudy. Um, the gentleman <laughs> who plays the teacher on Glee was the understudy for Link Larkin in Hairspray. And then the guy who played Link Larkin got a movie and left, and then he stepped into the role and the rest is history. So um, this could be your moment. <laughs> All right, but I just wanna thank you guys. I'm super excited to work with you um, and um, to have you be leading men because you are in life. And so to be that in this production is going to be phenomenal. And uh, we're really grateful to have you on board. We're going to wrap up this conversation. But um, Lauren, if there are any folks who have any uh, questions, feel free to pop those on the screen. One thing I do want to let people know is to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel because we're going to have another uh, Carbon Conversation in two weeks with our creative team. So we'll have members who are the music department, um, recording studio information, the costume department, the graphic design folks, um, the videography um, department, all talking about this process and how we're going to be going on this journey and unpacking that. Um, some of those folks are uh, longtime professionals and adults, and some of those folks are uh, returning um, cast members who are on the creative team as assistant directors or costume uh, uh, designers. And so we're excited to see sort of this multi-generational leadership group in Voices of Carmen. And then also um, we are fundraising. This program costs about $25,000. So we're trying to raise half of that, uh, which is $12,500. So if you zoom in, we'll show you where we're at. Yeah, we're right here. See that little zero? <laughs> That's where we at, yo. We I was really looking forward to seeing something too. I was like, where we at? <laughs> we can just inch that thing up just a little bit, yo. <laughs> So this is the beginning of our fundraising campaign, and this is where you can go to fundraise, uh, drop or don't the box. Or you can just go to our danceandbemore.com website and click the donate button. Again, $5, $500, we appreciate any of it. Um, lastly, Sarah, will you tell them when our next Karma Conversation is? And you'll be able to do it because she's going to show it on the screen. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Our next Carbon Conversation will be Tuesday, July 21st, uh, <laughs> during the same kind of time slot. And you can find us in the exact same place on YouTube. Awesome. Yeah. Gentlemen, any last words before we head out? Let's work. All right. <laughs> Helpful to our incoming Carmen's and Don Jose's and cast members and crew members who are getting ready for their first day on Monday, July 13th. Siren, I want to thank you so much for co hosting with me today. You did a fantastic job. <laughs> and I always love working with you. Thank and you. To our guest and also to Lauren working backstage and behind the scenes, moving all the things, and our production assistant, Jackie Molina. Have a great rest of your day, everybody, and we will see you next time. Peace and love. Habanera.